in this prior video we have added PostgreSQL 12 and MongoDB as targets to our big data offerings and we'll be adding more to this uh, shortly but we have now covered most every major uh, big data repositories with JSONized HL7 data. BDR migrates any HL7 data directly into big data repositories. This becomes really useful to get by the second, by the minute results that are important to patients as much as it's important to marketing people. Use our graphical interface, which I'm going to show you now for big data repositories. And we're hoping soon, at the end of the, uh, the month or a few extra weeks, to be able to migrate all this HL7 JSON format that we're, we're converting raw um, HL7 into JSON and then get that into Fire JSON into Fire servers. Our processes will be scalable, low latency, accurate set of microservices that will reduce months, if not longer, uh, of efforts to just minutes and hours. So we are going to go take a look at this now. Now let's move on with the demo. So first what I want to show is the file system. So in the file system here, we're going to look at the, we're going to be taking in HL7 raw data. That could be put into a C directory, a server directory. Now let's move on to the demo. Here what I want to show is we're going to be working with raw HL7 data that was taken in to HDFS. It could be taken into a C drive, file directories, S3, uh, several other uh, locations uh, to then be processed. So here we're going to look real quick just to verify what's in this data. So here we can see as we open up this data we have decrypted raw HL7 messages um, and transactions. So what we're going to first do is we're going to go into the HL7 processing jobs. We're going to convert the jobs into an HL7 JSON and then move it to one of several locations. Uh, the locations that we will have available by the end of the week are going to be, well, and you'll see a lot of them today, is Snowflake, S3, Redshift, Postgre, MongoDB, um, and others. So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to take in uh, HL7 raw data from HDFS. And here we have um, the HD... Um, the HDFS data we selected. We're going to write this to Snowflake. We're going to use an existing uh, warehouse that we already configured and we have these pre-configured in the administration. So um, I will take today's date 1013 so we'll do HL7 1013 is our Snowflake output table. We'll test our connection. Our connection's fine. We're not going to save that. And we're going to run our process. So right now we are taking that information. So we are going to go over into our connection in Snowflake. And We'll refresh and wait as we can see um, we, we've run other user runs uh, earlier and I can even just preview some of that data to show you. Uh, same example I ran earlier but we're running a fresh one and as you can see it's now in a JSON format and the data is encrypted. 
Everything we do is end-to-end -end encryption. We can even encrypt the HDFS input raw data or whatever directory it's in, and that's something that I and, and we suggest um, that should be done. So let's refresh again. So now here we see HL7 um, Snowflake um, with with the date that I picked. Um, and we will open up, preview that data, and as we can see, just like the others, we now have it in a JSON format, and it is securely encrypted. Now, let's go in and run another process. So here, we're going to convert, and I just want to show it first, so let's go look at the S3 directory which we can do from the Big Data Revealed app and if we go look at the file content we're going against the AWS server now versus the virtual machine and we can see that we have raw HL7 data. Now HL7 processed and we're gonna go run and convert but this time we're going to source the S3 uh, HL7 data and we're going to select that and we're going to write that to Snowflake also and we'll go into the existing warehouse and here we'll call this HL7 uh, HD, I'm sorry, S3 to Snowflake 5. And we'll test our Snowflake connection. It's fine. We're not going to save our passwords. And we're going to run this process. So now we're going to come back over and patiently wait. Um, that's not too patient of me. I'm already refreshing, but we're going to wait until we uh, see that we took the S3 and um, wrote the S3 information, HL7 segments, transactions and here we have them and they're encrypted and they're in Snowflake. So there again we took the S3 input which could um, also be an output. So again there it is in adjacent format and there it is in its encrypted format. So what we're offering is a much quicker means to be able to take HL7 raw data from server directories, HDFS, where most anywhere they're going to be stored, put them into a JSON format, and then write them to S3, Redshift, Postgres 12, which we also have a BDR, Postgres 12 warehouse. You can be able to write it to Snowflake. Uh, MongoDB, BigQuery, which I'll be showing in a minute. Uh, we can, uh, upon request, do SQL Server, Oracle, pretty much anywhere where you can store um, JSON data, we'll be able to do those conversions. This is the predecessor and the step that's necessary for Big Data Reveal fields. We're going to be the first to then be able to work with this data, which we have in the past, but we're working on algorithms and ways and mapping to be able to take this new JSON format of HL7, get it into a FHIR format of HL7, and get it ingested into FHIR, all 37,000 
almost 400 columns and have that automated. So instead of taking weeks, months, or years to get all that mapping done, we're looking to have that automated and have a version of that out within the next month or so. So I thank you for looking at this portion. I am now going to go um, and turn on the uh, Google BigQuery server and demonstrate us working and writing to uh, BigQuery and Google. So I will be back here shortly. Thank you. Okay, now that we're in the Google Cloud platform, we're looking at the HL7 input of the raw data and we're going to then write this to BigQuery. So here we're going to go in and do the convert. Here we're looking at uh, only one file in the BigQuery repository. We are now going to take an HDFS uh, fire raw HL7 input. We're going to write it into BigQuery. It's all pre-established by the administrator. We're going in and establishing our connection. We're going to give a name HL7 convert. We're now running the process that's going to take the HDFS raw HL7, write it to BigQuery, and it's also going to JSONize it, and it's going to encrypt that data. Now with the process completed, we will go into BigQuery, we'll refresh it, and we'll see that there'll be a second table inside the schema and that will be the table that we just created and that will be a new JSON version, there it is so we are going to open up that table and there we see we have the JSON we have it um, encrypted and it's sitting in BigQuery and now it can be used by analysts once again, I thank you for your time to view this demo. And in closing, I just want to mention that um, soon BDR Fire will deliver primary fire resources fields, extensions, and HL7Z user types directly into fire servers. Uh, BDR Fire already provides secure patient downloads with end to end encryption. Uh, migration to big data from fire here you saw it from HL7 JSON everything will be again end-to-end -end encryption and the ability to take familiar names from EHR systems EMR systems that now differ in the fire terminology and add metadata so it shows up with the names that you're used to seeing Again, everything you saw is going to quicken up your ability to deal with hospitals, to deal with patients, to deal with providers, healthcare, pharmacies, and have analysts, data scientists, and people derive very important information to be able to help and aid people in the healthcare industry and for the patients, as well is gather a lot of value information that with consented data to be able to help in your marketing efforts um, dealing with these results. Again, I thank you. Stay COVID safe and watch for our next video. As we have shown you with other databases for uh, like Google BigQuery, HDFS, S3, Snowflake, and others we now have um, created and completed PostgreSQL 12 and MongoDB. So we are going to now show those databases um, working with the JSONization of raw HL7. So here we can see the data in MongoDB 
and we are running our process against the raw HL7 which we're going to select the source which in this case ha happens to be in HDFS which stores um, HL7 very well and stores uh, JSON very well but now we're picking MongoDB as a source and giving it a table name and we are going to take the raw HL7 as we have with the other big data repositories and we will put it into JSON and make it available to the analysts, uh, data scientists, doctors and others uh, for their use in, in including the marketing people. Now the job should be completing shortly as it just has and now we are going to go look at the repository for MongoDB and here we can see within MongoDB things are now in a JSON format and can be used by data scientists once again analysts and others to be able to make business decisions marketing decisions healthcare decisions um, and now what we're going to do also is to show the PostgreSQL so now we're showing once again raw HL7 transactions we're showing a PostgreSQL schema we're going to go into the process jobs for HL7 we're going to take the same source in HDFS which are raw HL7 transactions this time we're picking the BDR warehouse which just happens to be a warehouse that we created from Postgre uh, SQL 12 we can have a timestamp on the table and we're going to run this job and then we'll look at the results in PostgreSQL 12 shortly. Now with the PostgreSQL 12 job completed, we'll refresh the schema. We'll see our new file and file name and we'll see that we now have the data in a JSON format, which soon we will be offering up this capability to be able to do the queries and reporting straight from our own interfaces. So again, thank you for watching yet another extension of the video as it grows and as we grow the features and functions. Thank you.